seagrass meadows are one of the most productive ecosystems in the world. They are found in shallow, salty, and brackish waters in many parts of the world, from the tropics to the Arctic Circle. Contrary to popular belief, the seagrasses are not the same as seaweed and are actually more closely related to flowering plants on land. They are also part of the angiosperm phylum. They evolved around 100 million years ago, and today there are approximately 72 different seagrass species around the world. But today we will be learning about two invasive seagrass species on the coasts of Oregon and Aruba. To get started, we first need to understand what an invasive species is and why you should care about them. An introduced species becomes invasive if it adapts to the new area easily, if it can reproduce quickly, prime property, the economy, or the native plants and animals of the region. We'll first go over an invasive species off the coast of Oregon, Japanese eelgrass. The scientific name is Zostera japonica. As the name suggests, this seagrass is native to the coast of Japan. It was introduced to the western coast of the United States as early as 1930. During this time, Zostera japonica was used as live packing material in oyster shipments, which introduced the species to our coast. Zostera japonica is an herbaceous seagrass with stems reaching around 12 inches in length. Leaves are arranged alternately on the stem with extremely narrow blades reaching up to 14 inches long. It typically grows in intertidal zones in mudflats and sandflats. Zostera marina is a native seagrass species in this area. The leaves of this plant are flatter and wider than those of the Zostera japonica. They are typically anywhere between 1 tenth to 1 half inches in width and can reach up to 10 feet in length. So Stereotroponica can have many environmental impacts on our coastal region, despite not officially being recognized as an invasive species by the state of Oregon. The introduction of Zosteroponica has led to the colonization and overgrowth of previously uninhabited areas, which were home to vast sand and mudflats. It has a high resistance to disturbances as well, meaning it can easily outcompete native species for space. Of previously bare mud flats, Zostera japonica has altered nitrogen and carbon cycling. These areas have transitioned from functioning as sources of inorganic nutrients to sinks of these nutrients. In estuaries and mud flats where only Zostera japonica is present, nitrogen usage by other species has been proven to be limited. Altered nutrient availability can impact the natural biological community in an area can also decrease the rate of water flow to mud and sand flats by upwards of 40%. The growth of this plant captures fine sediments in the intertidal zones, which causes a disturbance in the balance of species inhabiting the area. This causes a change in the use of this habitat by species dependent on bare mud flats. Next, we'll discuss an species off the coast of Aruba, Halophila stupulesia, otherwise known as tropical seagrass. Halophilia stupulesia species is native to the Red Sea, Persian Gulf, and Indian Ocean. It arrived in the Caribbean in 2002 through fragments transported by commercial and recreational shipping. In the Caribbean, this invasive species has occupied vast areas in a short amount of time. Here, you can see a dense growth of the invasive species in San Nicolas Bay, 2013. It is found ashore along the coastline. The main impact of this species is that it physically displaces native Caribbean seagrass species, specifically the Delicia testinum in Aruba. Delicia testinum, commonly known as turtle grass, is the native seagrass of Aruba. Its common name was given as it is an important part of the green sea turtle diet. When green sea turtles eat the turtle grass, they usually leave some small plants behind. After a while, the turtle grass grows back and the turtle can come back and eat from it again. With the invasive Halophilia stipulesia species, it takes the place of the native turtle grass as it grows much faster. Other possible impacts of this invasive seagrass is reduced or altered juvenile fish communities. 